What fuels creativity? What paralyzes it? We were assigned to find a topic that meant something, that would make a difference. After coming up with multiple ideas and then scratching them, we felt like we were in the midst of a creative block. Finding what makes a person more or less creative is something we felt was relevant to everyday life and something we were all concerned with. We did some background research to see what others have already discovered in the field. What we found was that others have experimented with long-term creative potential, but nothing dealt with it in the short term. What we also found was that a person's creativity is the sum of all their products made over their lifetime. Seeing that this is impossible to find, we made sure to specify that our new question was what fuels and paralyzes creative potential. Once we knew our question, we had to decide in which ways we were going to test it. We decided that we would test five different factors, reading, physical activity, humor, isolation, listening to music, and of course, a control group. Each group would need at least 25 students to ensure that our test results are more accurate. Then we had to figure out how we were going to actually test our idea. We started by asking multiple teachers around the school to see if they would be willing to let us use their students as subjects for our test. We came up with a testing date and a room for each of us to use for our test. We worked together to find the most useful types of creativity tests and modified them to best fit our motives. On the day of the testing, each group member was to report to the place they were testing their factor. These creativity tests were administered, giving students five minutes to answer as many questions as they could, and were then exposed to the stimuli for 20 minutes. The exposure was followed by a second creativity test. It was in the same format as the first with the same directions, but with different information. The goal was to use the second test to see the growth the stimuli had on their creative output. After the full experiment and testing was over, we began to record the results. Our study assisted other researchers who wished to continue in the field of creativity by setting out proper guidelines and limitations on how to properly, objectively, and effectively measure creative output. Not only did our primary research provide information on what to do, it also provides information on what not to do. Our core setback during our experimental stage was the amount of dedication and cooperation of our participants. Due to the fact we used students whose time was volunteered by their teachers, the students lacked a certain level of cooperation. We would recommend to anyone who wishes to continue work in this study utilize participants who are willing and committed to the research. However, our group with the humor stimulus had cooperating students who were enthusiastic about the experiment. In this specific stimulus, results tended to have a slight increase, yet nothing very significant. In the end, these results led us to the conclusion that our experimentation in testing the effects of short-term exposure to a stimulus yielded no extreme fueling or paralyzing in creative potential. Nonetheless, our results still offer useful, innovative information, with the knowledge that a period of short-term exposure to a stimulus cannot have a significant impact on creative potential. Our research provide a foundation and start to a vaster exploration. It implements an idea that can be expanded upon in a multitude of ways. Our procedures and ideas can be used in a study that measures the growth and stagnation of creative potential when exposed to a long-term stimulus. Overall, our study fits Umar's definition of awesomeness, or what happens when thick, real, meaningful value is created by people who love what they do, added to insanely great stuff, and multiplied by communities who are delighted and inspired because they are authentically better off.